Welcome to YouTube Finance XL trick number eight. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link and download the workbook Finance Tricks 1 to 17. Hey, in trick number eight, we're on the loan analysis sheet tab, and we want to analyze a bunch of loans. We have options, seven different loans. We have a price, number of compounding periods, and a balloon payment at the end. Now, I want to actually name these cells before we get calculating uh, a bunch of things so we can figure out which loan is best. I'm going to click in this cell right here, click up in the name box, and I'm going to name it something short, P, Enter. Then I'm going to click down here in compounding periods per year, click up in the name box, compounding periods per year, Enter. Then I'm going to click down here, click up in the name box, B, Enter for balloon. Then I can check by pointing to each one. And if the cell jumps to it, I know I got them right. Now, here's all the variables for our loans, option, uh, down payment, the rate, annual rate, years, points. That's the fee they're going to take. Oh, and an extra fee. Scroll over, we're going to have to calculate amount to borrow, monthly payment, actual cash received, adjusted APR, and balloon payment. I'm going to calculate this amount to borrow first. I'm going to highlight the whole range and then the cell up at the top. I'm going to say equals P because the amount, the price is 430,000. Now we need to multiply this times, open parentheses, 1 minus our down payment. So in essence, this first one will take 430,000. 1 minus 5% is 95%, so 95% of that. Now, to enter this formula all the way down, that name will be locked when I go down, but that's a relative cell reference there, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to my left. So when I control Enter, it works like magic. I'm going to click in the last cell and hit F2 just to make sure. Yep, it worked. The green one's there, the blue one's there. Now I'm going to scroll over. Our next calculation is going to be monthly payment. I'm going to highlight the whole range and the cell. At the top, the light colored one equals PMT. We're going to use our payment function. And as we've talked a lot in this series so far, all of the arguments, two very important points. The unit must be the same for all. So if we're doing monthly, everything has to be monthly. And cash flow matters. you got to put your minuses and your pluses in the right place. Now the rate, the rate is going to be this APE. APR divided by, and then we have named our compounding periods per year. You could see it comes up. So I have that divided by that comma. Now NPER, years, times compounding periods per year, that named range. So you can see that's our NPER, comma. Now our present value is going to be this uh, amount that we're borrowing. Now, this uh, has to be in the correct cash flow. Is this going to be positive or negative? Now, when you borrow some money and they give you the money, that's coming into your wallet, so it's positive. So we'll just click there. I'm going to point to this screen uh, tip here and click and drag. Now, future value we don't need because we don't have balloon payment and payment type. Uh, that's a zero, but by default, since zero means end of the payment, end of the period when the payment occurs, we can leave it out because it's the default. So I close parentheses, control enter. I can click in the last cell right there and hit F2. And sure enough, wow, I got all the right things, including if you scroll over that green one right there. All right, now actual cash received. Now this is very important because they're going to charge us points and a fee. So watch this, equals. Oh, the amount we borrowed, we thought we were going to get that much, but they took a bunch. And guess what? We had to use that amount to borrow to calculate the monthly payment. But that's really not how much cash we received. All right, we're going to, because we still have to pay it all back, even though they took some of it for all the fees. So actual cash received is going to be the amount borrowed times, in parentheses, 1 minus the points. But no way, look at the points. That's the number 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. That would be 0. That would be terrible. It's actually this points divided by 100. Now, it probably would have made better sense to put this as a decimal. But sometimes you get a spreadsheet like that, and that's how you deal with it. Now, that's not the end of it, because they also took some fees minus some fees. Now, the we got all of our, these are all relative cell references. So when we control it, 
control enter, it puts the formula in the cell. I point to my uh, fill handle right there. And when I see my angry rabbit, that little crosshair, I click and double click and send it down. As long as there's something to the left, that trick works. I click in the last cell and I hit F2 to verify. And sure enough, all of my cell references are correct. I'm going to hit Enter. So look at this for this last one. We borrowed 65,500, but we only got 361,095 bucks. Now, the adjusted APR. Now, we already have our APR over here, right? I thought we were quoted it. But guess what? Since we actually didn't receive all the cash, our present value is really this, and our other cash flow associated with this is the monthly payment. So if we use those two things with the rate, R-A-T-E, rate function, we can actually calculate it our, our adjusted APR. So equals rate, and I'm going to scroll over here, rate. And in 2007, when you see your function, you just hit tab. Otherwise, you have to type it all in. And it needs N-P-E-R, P-M-T, P, et cetera. N-P-E-R. Now, what is that going to be? We're going to have to go over and get that, because it's 30. That's a relative cell reference. So when we copy it down, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to my left, times compounding periods per year. We have that, rank, that um, input named, comma. And our payment is going to be one cell to the left, a relative cell reference, comma. And sure enough, our um, present value is this actual cash received. Now, back to this payment, if I backspace right here, that payment is negative because it's coming out of our wallet, comma, again. And I'm going to look at this present value. Oh, that's actually coming into our wallet because when we get a loan, it's coming into our wallet. Now, I can't click on this. Notice it looks like this cell has centered on it. So it's actually hanging out, and I can't click on it. One way to deal with that is to use your arrow key. So I'm going to use my left arrow key and see how when I use my left arrow key, I get my dancing ants. If that doesn't work, hit the F2 key, and it will put it back into point and click mode. And then um, we don't have a future value, a balloon payment, yet in our analysis. Or the, the type is default. We don't need that. And we don't need to guess. Uh, if the iterations were great, you could uh, give it a guess, and it would st start somewhere close to that in its iterations. I'm going to close parentheses and Control Enter. 0.72. That's not right at all. Now, I'm going to hit F2. Very important, all the financial functions, they always deal in the same unit. And since we're talking about months, this rate function spits out what? Control Enter, a monthly rate. So we simply have to hit F2 and then edit this with our cursor at the end. We say times CPY. That's the named range for 12 compounding periods, 12 per year. Control Enter and then double click and send that down. I click in the last cell and hit F2. Control Enter. That looks great. That is actually the rate we're paying after points and fees. Now, balloon payment, I'm going to highlight the whole range equals PMT, open parenthesis, the rate. I'm going to have to scroll over and get the APR times. And that's our compounding periods per year name. So we have our rate, comma, the NPER. Well, I'm going to use my arrow key to go get this. Go over and get the years times. And same CPY. Our named range, you can see we have our NPER, total compounding periods, comma. Now the present value, we're going to have to go over and get this because that's the whole amount that we owe, not this cash received. That's for when we're doing our adjusted uh, APR. But amount borrowed and still totally owed is that amount uh, there. And then comma, and where this uh, future value comes in is we have a balloon payment. That means what is this loan contract worth on the final day of the contract? It is worth the balloon amount that we're then going to pay. So I'm going to type B for balloon. And if you scroll over, if you were to scroll over, I'm going to close parentheses. If you were to scroll over, you could see the green cell highlighted right there. And I put a minus there because it is a minus because that means we're that's going out. So we have 
uh, our present value, which is positive, and our future value amount, which is negative, mean, which means going back out. And the PMT will spit out a negative here. Control Enter. And sure enough, that is incorrect. No problem. We want to edit with the range still highlighted. Hit F2. And sure enough, if we click in here, we can read each one of these. And definitely, the bank would love this, but we don't. I accidentally put multiplication instead of division. Yeah, we want the annual rate divided by the number of compounding periods per year. Control Enter. And there we go. There's our balloon payment. All right, we'll see you next Excel Finance Trick.